Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So following on from our previous video about designing your planners, today we're actually going to make them. So I've got my planner here that I've already pre-made, I've got my front and back covers, I've got my divider tabs, I've got my embellishments, I've got all my different pages that I've created. I've got plain paper and you can see that a lot of work goes into these. Equally you can just make a really quick one as well. So it's completely up to you how detailed you want your planner, your diary, uh, your notebook to be. So for me, the only thing that I cut out on the machines are the divider pages because of the tabs. So I use my Cricut to cut those out using print and cut. And also all of my embellishments as well. So I use print and cut and my machine to cut out all my embellishment pieces. All of my pages I manually cut using a trimmer. So you can create them because they're just a rectangle. So you can create them and print them in uh, Canva, you can do them in Illustrator, Photoshop, lots of programs you can do them in, or of course you can use print and cut. If I was gonna do sticker sheets, things like that, then I would use print and cut for those. My front and back covers, I've manually cut those using my trimmer because again, they're just a rectangle. And the inside of my front and back covers, I've manually cut those as well using the trimmer because again, they are just rectangle. As I touched on in the previous video, make sure that if you're gonna be using Design Space and Print Then Cut, that you are aware of if you're going to need a 4 or a 3 sizing or whatever sizing you may need and make sure that you change your load size in the settings so that your print then cut is set to the appropriate size. So the first thing I'm going to do is with my front and back cover and I'm actually going to cover them in a clear vinyl. I will link to this in the description below, in fact everything will be linked in the description below. This is just a self adhesive clear vinyl and I'm going to place it on top of my front and back cover so that it gives it a little bit of protection. You can see here it gives it a nice shine as well. You could also use a holographic adhesive as well which again they work really well we use them with stickers and they do work amazing. So I'm just going to peel back the clear adhesive And then I'm just going to use my brayer as well, just to make sure that there's no air bubbles in that. And then I'm just going to use my scissors to manually trim it down. It doesn't have to be perfect because we do have this border that's going to be folded round onto our chipboard. So just to go over the weights again as well, my front and back covers I've done in 180 GSM. The insides for my front and back covers are the same, so 180 GSM. My divider pages are 300 GSM. My inside pages, my printed ones I've just done on laser copy paper. And then I had some coloured paper packs that are not very thick at all. I would say slightly thicker than copy paper, but certainly no more than 100, 120 GSM. I've got some chipboard here. I have got this from Craftilia, but you can get it from most craft stores, Amazon, Hobbycraft. As I say, we will link to everything below. Ideally you want it to either be one 
1.5 or 2 millimeters in thickness. You do not want to go any higher than 2 millimeters. Mine is 1.5 and I find that's perfect. Now I do not cut this out on the machine. You can use the knife blade if you want to, but I just think it takes so long and it's unnecessary. So what I do is I use my printed template that I use for my chipboard and I literally just cut it out in card. I draw onto my chipboard, I get my metal ruler and my true control knife. You want to make sure you've got a nice sturdy surface and you're using a self healing mat. The last thing you want to do is do this on a nice table or work surface without a self healing mat as protection. You do need quite a firm pressure. And you may find that you have to go in maybe two or three times. I can see that that's cut, so I can then do this part. There's my first one, and there's my second one. So I've got my chipboard pieces for my front and my back, and what I know I've done is I've left a half an inch gap so that I can fold this round onto my chipboard. So I'm just going to use my ruler to just map out that half inch all the way around. And if you use our templates this is all done for you so you don't have to worry about the measurements your measurements are going to be the same as mine um, if you use any of the templates that we've created. And the border should always be half an inch on all four sides. I'm then going to get my ruler and I'm just going to use it to fold that over And then I'm going to use my scraper to really make that fold nice and crisp. And I'm going to do that for all four sides. So I've got my front and my back, I've got my chipboard and I've got some double sided tape. So what I'm going to do is just add the double sided tape to the middle section square here. I'm just going to do it all around the border and going through the center as well. I always find it quite tricky to take the other side of the double sided tape off so I just use my true control knife. I can then get my chipboard and then glue that down and I'm going to do the same for this one. I can glue that down. Now normally what I would do is I would add the standard double sided tape all the way round and that would be fine but because I've put the vinyl on here it's made it quite a lot more rigid. So I'm going to use a red double sided which is basically an extra extra strong. So I'm going to use that but what I'm not going to do is peel it off so I'm going to place it all the way around but I'm not going to peel it yet. And then I'm going to do the same for this one. I'm then going to get my mitre corner tool, which I just got from Craftelier. And I'm just going to place that onto the corner of my chipboard. And then that gives me my corner cut. So basically what this is doing 
is it's going to allow me to fold this around my chipboard without ending up with a big bulky corner. I can then remove my double sided and then fold that over And there we go, we've then got our front and we'll have our back. And then again, I just like to use my scraper. I can then take my front and back backs, my front and back backs, for lack of a better word, and I can then get those in place. So what I like to do is use my regular double-sided tape Put it onto the insert rather than your cover. I can then secure that down to hide all of the ugliness going on and we've got our front and our back covers. So now our front and back covers are sorted we're going to actually get everything put together. So I've got each of my divider tabs and I've put those into order and then I'm going to start adding my pages in so each of my pages I'm going to add those into order and my plain pages as well now depending on the wire you're using will depend upon how thick your book can be that includes your front and your back cover in the files in which we've created the templates I will add into those by the time this video has gone live the thicknesses for the wires so I will put in each of the files the wire sizes and I will add in the thickness that your booklet can be a maximum of and I will add it into the description below with any other links that I need to add Okay, so I've got it all set up the way I want it. I've got my front cover and my back cover. So I'm using the multi cinch today, which means I can use different things. So I've got disc, square or circle. I'm gonna go with square today. So I'm just going to place that in and on each of these it tells you where your guide position needs to go based on the size of your book. So mine needs to go into A. I'm using 5 8 binding wire today. And again, I will put all the binding wire sizes and the thickness into each of the templates and in the description below. Now, I am not going to trim this until I am ready 
to kind of close it up. So for now, I'm just going to place that onto there so that I can hook each of my pieces on. I'm going to start with the pages first. And we're going to start from the back moving forward. So I'm going to take a few from the back. On the multi, on your guide, it actually gives you the thickness. So that line there is as thick as you can put into the punch. I want to make sure that they're nice and lined up. I'm going to line them up to that guide. And I'm going to push them as far in as they can go. And then I'm just going to push down. You can see I've created my punches. Now, on the multi, again, depending on what size you're using and what thing you're using it will tell you where you need to align the next punch so on here you've got this little doodah that's going to hold it in place and you're going to put it down onto the second to last punch so i'm going to put it down onto the second to last punch i'm going to take my guide out because i don't need that for a second so again, I'm going to place that back in. I'm going to line this up. To that second to last punch. And I'm going to press it down so that that is then secured in place. Again, I'm going to push that all the way to the back. Punch. Lift that up. Again, I'm going to place that into the second to last. Push it all the way back. Lift that up. And that is my first set done. So I can then place that onto my wires, like so. So then I'm going to get the next few pages, put my guide back in for the first one. Push that all the way to the back. Take my guide out. I'm going to get that in line with the second to last punch. Push that down. Push that all the way back. Lift it up. Do the last one. And that's then going onto my spiral and I'm just going to keep doing that all the way until I've got no more pages left and I just then have to do the front and the back.
So we're going to do the front and the back next. And what's going to happen is we're going to put them on top of each other, front, so good side to good side. So this one's going to go down first, and then this one's going to go on top. So we're going to punch down this side and this one's going to go down and then we're going to punch down this side and this one's going to go down. Exactly the same punching process. Now I do find with the chipboard you do really have to give this a good, so I wouldn't put anything else in with the front and the back covers. I would just put in the front cover, punch it, the back cover, punch it. I wouldn't do anything else and I do find that I need a lot of strength but it's well known that I don't have very good upper body strength so just bear that in mind. So I take my guide out, secure it on the second to last punch Make sure it's pushed right back, push that up, and then again secure it on the second to last punch. So that's then going like so. So that's going to be our front. We're then going to punch our back. And again, we want to put them good side to good side or outside to outside, however you want to look at it. Again, we've got our guide in place. We're going to push that all the way to the back. Remove our guide. Secure it on the second to last hole. Push that all the way to the back. Again, secure it on the second to last hole. And then do our final punch. That's then going good side to good side. Down onto there. We're then going to turn this round and we're going to work with the binding close. So I'm going to take the spiral bind off and of course I've got my book attached and I'm just going to bring it in to this back bit and I'm just going to make it a little bit more even so that the book is actually sat more on the bottom of the wire than the top. I'm going to bring that in and I'm literally just going to push down. Just like so. And then I'm going to move on to the next section and do the same thing. And then the last two. And that's it. That is now nice and bound. I'm then going to get my pliers and I'm going to cut about here. So that last piece where that last spiral meets, I'm just going to cut about there. And you can see it leaves me with a little tail and I'm just going to pull that tail 
sort of back round on itself. And then I'm going to do the same with the one at the other end. I'm just going to pull it back round on itself just to close them up and there we go I now have my book all ready to go I can then start adding in my embellishments as I said earlier, if you wanted sticker pages, you would put those in when you did the punching. So at this point, all that's left for me to do is just add my embellishments in. So I've got some here and I can either glue them in or I can use some foam squares to give them a little bit of definition. And that's it. That is our plan or, or our notebook, whatever it is that we're going to make. As I say, I'll link to everything in the description below. If you've got any comments or questions, please don't forget to ask us. You can ask us below. You can ask us in our group, UK Cricket Creators. You don't need to be in the UK. We will be doing this as a free virtual event. We've already done one. We'll do a second one. So make sure you join the group so that you can join those free classes. As always, thank you so much for joining us. If you've got any comments or questions, please do leave them below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.